Business Lesson 16, Finding Fulfilling Work, Book 5, Business English, Vocabulary, Part 1, Page 116. Exploit. Conundrum. Self-indulgent. Timidity. Surmise. Preordained. Shadow. Collide. Listening, Part 1, Page 117, Script on Page 203, Part A. The idea that work might be fulfilling, rather than just painfully necessary, is a strikingly recent invention. Open Dr. Johnson's celebrated dictionary, published in 1755, and the word fulfillment doesn't even appear. Nowadays in a prosperous world, we don't only expect to obtain money through our labor, we also, to a greater or lesser extent, expect to find meaning and satisfaction. It's a big ask and helps to explain why so many of us have career crises often on a Sunday evening as the sun begins to set. To help us on the quest for fulfilling work, here are a few useful ideas. First, accept that being confused about careers is perfectly normal. In a pre-industrial world, there were at most some 2,000 different trades out there. Nowadays, there are estimated to be half a million different options. The result? We can become so anxious about making the wrong choice, we end up making no choice at all. Psychologists call this the paradox of choice paralysis stemming from too many options. We should acknowledge that confusion is natural and fear entirely normal, but let neither of these scuppers our chances forever. Part B. Second, know yourself. It's the oldest philosophical recommendation and has particular relevance to careers. For 99% of us, knowing what we want to do doesn't arise spontaneously, like knowing what to eat. Most of us don't have a calling. We don't hear a commanding godlike voice directing us to accountancy or packaging and distribution. That isn't to say we don't have taste or inclinations, we just don't know them clearly enough, which is a perilous position to be in, as not having a plan quickly puts us at the mercy of those who do have one. We only catch glimpses, little hints of our tastes. So we have to learn to pick up on their faint sounds. Start by parking any concerns for money for a time. Financial panic too often kills all dialogue with the more authentic, passionate sides of one's nature. Write down, without being too logical or analytical about it, everything you've ever enjoyed doing or making, which might include building a treehouse or sorting out winter clothes. The weirder and more offbeat the list, the better. In the long and confusing tangle that follows, there will somewhere be the shape of an ideal future working self, but it'll be very messed up and need to be analyzed thoroughly. That's where philosophy comes in. Philosophy is the art of clearing up and demanding the logic of our first thoughts. Article Part 2, page 118. Find fulfilling work. Third, think a lot. If it might take a couple of days, even a week, to choose a new car, it could fairly take a year or more of sustained daily reflection to start to identify a career that fits. We tend to feel guilty about this, imagining we're being self indulgent. Far from it. We may need to empty every weekend for months to sort out the biggest conundrum of our lives. To make sure we don't continue to spend the rest of our lives trapped in a job unwittingly chosen for us by our unknowing 16-year-old selves, we need to be properly generous about the amount of time we'll need to give this. Fourth, try something. It's tempting to imagine we'll be able to work out the shape of the workplace and of our own characters simply through a pure process of reflection. But we need data, and we can only understand ourselves and others by colliding with the real world, in the process getting to know both it and our own natures. We need to take small, non-irrevocable steps to gather information, for example by shadowing, interning, or volunteering. We mustn't think we always have to resign on Monday. We can investigate our futures through branching projects on the side of existing jobs. Fifth, reflect on what makes people unhappy. Every successful business is at heart an attempt to solve someone else's problem. The bigger and more urgent problem, the greater the opportunity. To flex your entrepreneurial muscles, consider an average day and everything in it that might make someone unhappy. From losing the house keys to finding the food a little greasy, to arguing yet again with their spouse. Each of these is a business opportunity waiting to be exploited. It's a chance for us to serve, which is what work really is. It's easy to imagine that everything's been done and tried. Nonsense. We're unhappy enough for capitalism to have many more centuries of invention and creativity to it. Sixth. Be confident. So many bad self-help books are about confidence. It can be tempting to dismiss the whole topic as nonsense. But in a peculiar and rather humbling way, it really does seem as if the difference between success and failure 
is sometimes nothing less than the courage to give it a go. The ability to imagine oneself into a role, to one doesn't surmise need to ask anyone for permission, that many of the top positions simply belong to those who dare to boldly ask for them. A lack of confidence is at heart a misunderstanding of the way the world works. It's an internalized feudalism that imagines that only certain people, but not oneself, have the right, preordained, to get certain things. It isn't true. As we know, a lot more is possible than we might think at our moments of timidity and doubt. That's the start of the path towards a job we won't regret on our deathbeds, which should always be the ultimate criterion. Study Skills, Part 1, Page 119 Looking for a fulfilling job? Ask yourself these six key questions. Dreading another dull day in the office? If you've lost your passion for work, it could be time to make a break. Find a job you love by asking yourself these six essential questions. 1. What do you like about work? When trying to figure out your dream job, it can be tempting to do just that. Conjure up a vision of a fantasy role where every minute is thrilling, the pay is stupendous, and the perks are to die for. But a more effective and realistic approach is to reflect on what you've liked and disliked about past roles and use the learnings to inform your next move. So cast your mind back to the last time you felt fully engaged and fulfilled in the workplace and think about what it was that made you feel that way. Was it the kind of work you were doing? Was it the pace of the work? Was it the way you were working? 2. What are you good at? We all tend to be passionate about the things we're good at, and in any case, without that core ability, it's hard to find a role where you'll be able to develop. So, take a moment to think about your strengths and weaknesses as honestly as possible. List out your skill set in as much detail as possible, identifying not just hard skills, but also soft skills, such as negotiation, dealing with difficult people, and time management. If you're considering a career change, it's always tougher to convince a potential employer that you are a good fit for the role. So it's important to have done this work and thought about the transferable potential of what you're good at. 3. What do you want to learn? They say you should never stop learning, and this is especially true in the workplace. No matter what level you are, the key to being fully engaged in developing professionally and learning new things to keep your job interesting. So do your research and find an employer that invests in their staff. Most employers will make positive noises about investing in the development of their people, but try looking on social media and employee review sites for a fuller picture. And of course, you'll want to ask employers about their training and development opportunities at the interview too. 4. What kind of working culture do you thrive in? A trendy company with an amazing benefits package can sound great on paper, but if the culture isn't a good fit for you, you could end up miserable in your job. Getting a feel for a company's culture before accepting a job is important. The working environment and the atmosphere in which employees work can contribute massively to your workplace satisfaction. So think back over your previous roles and ask yourself, what kind of environment gets the best out of you on a day-to-day -day basis? Again, a little digging on social media, the careers page of a company's website, and employer review sites can be very revealing about what's going on at a workplace, culturally speaking. Does it look like there's a lot of hectic socializing, or is it a calmer, more collegiate sort of atmosphere? Do you get the impression of a supportive atmosphere where people's successes are recognized and celebrated? Does it look like a place where everyone pulls together till the job is done, or is it more somewhere that majors on flexible arrangements and work-life balance? 5. What impact do you want to have? Other than what the company has to offer you, think about the effect you want to have on the company. For example, if helping others is a great source of job satisfaction for you, it's important to know if there is ample opportunity to do so before accepting a new job role. Depending on your motivation, you might consider whether your potential employer offers the freedom to grow an area of the business, the opportunity to develop and lead new projects, participation in mentorship programs, the opportunity to take part in CSR activities. These points might be worthwhile to bring up at the interview when you're asked if you have any questions about the role. 6. What fits with your current lifestyle? One other key factor that impacts the attractiveness of a specific role is where you are in your own life. A parent of young children, for example, is likely to value financial security and the opportunity to work flexibly. Whereas if you're footloose and fancy-free, you may prefer to take on a role with less security but potentially higher rewards. 
to work out if a role is likely to have a good balance with the rest of your life, weigh up all the cons and consider their relative importance to you. Think about things like the length of commute, the likelihood of being able to leave on time, the relative quality of pay and benefits, job security and working hours required. It can sometimes be tricky to navigate a conversation of this type in an interview without arousing doubts about your commitment to the job. But again, a little digging around online can usually help you source some honest insights from the employee's perspective. Do make sure to read several reviews, though, to get an informed consensus. Finally, don't put yourself under too much pressure to find that dream job. It may not come next time around, or perhaps not straight away. But by thinking hard about what really matters to you, you'll have a better chance of getting there sooner. Hey, thanks for listening. We hope that you enjoyed another lesson of Uncle Sam's American English. These audios are synced with our four-book series. Contact one of our professors or join our online course by visiting our Facebook page, Uncle Sam's International.